my memories of the Paramount start around 1951, 52. I remember being taken there by my parents and I was just, even at maybe five, six years old, I was, I was just enthralled by the, the mammoth nature of it. I, I used to call it the Paramount and, and would go in, uh, you're greeted by this wonderful elderly lady with white hair, she would take your ticket, go get some popcorn and, and go get seated and see a movie on that giant screen and it's, it's, it was just, uh, it was fit for a king and you're, you really felt like royalty when you went in there. And I always said the Paramount was like an oasis in the desert because Middletown had shopping days, uh, Monday night and Friday night. And it was at kind of the far end of Broad Street next to the YMCA. And I always said it was like an oasis in the desert because you would see that orange neon, uh, the large vertical sign that said Paramount. And on either side of the marquee, there was a flashing P, and uh, with all that beautiful neon, it would just go P, 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 P. You could see that for, for blocks, and to me that was just another excuse to get to go in there. And uh, I was very sad when they tore the, the Paramount down because they had no real reason to tear it down. They had just uh, given it a fresh coat of paint and so had some kind of hope that they were going to keep it. But there was an article in the paper about three Sundays before they shut it down that the Paramount is closing. And I always said, and I probably stole this line from somebody else, but they paved paradise to put up a parking lot. <laughs> and they never even used the parking lot. Now, the Paramount opened, I guess, I'm, I'm proud to say I didn't see it open, but uh, I did get to see it close, and it, it was truly a sad day. They showed, uh, it was kind of ironic, they showed Bye Bye Birdie, and uh, I remember the marquee, it said, go, go, see, see, bye, bye, birdie. And uh, so I always associated that with bye, bye, Paramount. And it was, it was truly a sad day. I also have memories of the Strand Theater. The Strand at the time I remember it, was a second-run theater. And they would usually show movies like, oh, a month after they opened first run at the Paramount. And it was a, it was a, it was a good-sized theater. At one time it was a, uh, a vaudeville house. Had the largest stage in Middletown. In fact, I, they even had circus acts on the stage, and uh, it was a, it was, I can remember it from about 1951 till it closed in November of 58, and it was, it was one of my favorite theaters. Uh, the last movie I saw there was uh, George Goble was big then. Uh, it was in 1958. It was uh, I Married a Woman with George Goebel and uh, Diana Doors and The Fiend Who Walked the West uh, had Hugh O'Brien, which was famous, who was famous for uh, Wyatt Earp. And it closed, it was either October or November of 58. Also, remember The Colonial. Uh, the Colonial, 
I guess when I first remember the Colonial, it was built, it was remodeled, uh, had just been remodeled shortly. Uh, it formerly was the Sword Theater. They had a fire uh, around 1947. 1950 or 51, they reopened it as the Colonial. They did a did some remodeling, and um, I saw first-run movies such as Gentlemen Prefer Blondes uh, open there. That was in the early 50s. Uh, the Colonial was the first theater to have a widescreen cinemascope, it was called, and it had the first motion picture uh, that was widescreen was called The Road. And I remember going with my grandmother to see that. And I'm glad to see the efforts being made to restore it, uh, even beyond what it was when it was the Colonial. So I guess I'm one of Middletown's number one movie fans. I go back, I go back a few years. I'm not going to tell you how many, but uh, I go back a few years. My name's Bob Mello. I've uh, uh, been here to talk to about the Paramount the Colonial Theaters in Middletown. My dad uh, was a head projectionist at the Colonial Theater for over 40 years. I uh, grew up in there, saw my first movie at five years old, and from the projection booth, and about every weekend I'd go see the movies because, you know, get in free, you might as well go see them. And I started learning how to uh, splice movies, the films, uh, together when I was about six years old. And somewhere between six and Eight, I can say I started learning how to run the projectors, the, uh, the carbon art projectors, which was, wasn't an easy job, but it was fun. Uh, I remember doing that, and then as I got older, I, I got the usher, and watching people sneak in, we'd go down in front in the, in the areas and watch people sneak in, and when they get in, get down, then we'd escort them out, and then a few words were exchanged in, because I didn't say much in, I was a young kid, but you know, everything happens. I remember, uh, Going, my dad uh, showed the last uh, movie at the uh, Paramount when it closed in 1963. It was Bye Bye Birdie. He, uh, when he shut the project off, that was the final time. And it was not going to be shown anymore after that. It was going to be tore down, I guess, to make way for the uh, city of Silver Mart. Uh, and it was a beautiful theater. It had a big winding staircase, went up to the balcony, and up there, beautiful head. And that, that uh, Projection booth had two projector, uh, two projections in. One was responsible for his machine, the other was responsible for that. That's the only one in Middletown that used two projection guys. Um, I don't know why they did it, but that's what it was. Um, but like I said, it's a shame they tore that down. Such a beautiful theater. I saw, I don't know what year old I was, but I saw uh, Mickey Mouse Club every day had. Had a beautiful organ come up out of the stage, out of the floor, and they played music on it. and It was really nice. Uh, had a popcorn stand out, I mean, a, a ticket stand out in the middle, and you walked in, you got your ticket, and you just walked in, beautiful place. And I said, but my dad's main job was a colonial theater. He would go around to different theaters in Middletown, uh, family to Rex, to Gordon, to Dixie Cruising, drive in down here. He'd go and train new people how to run the projectors and everything, and it was you know, a pretty good experience. To, and then also, in the, and most people don't know, in the uh, colonial, which is the Sorg Opera House, there's a second balcony which is uh, up in where the projection booth is at. Most people have never seen it because you have a drop ceiling, you can't see it. Now they're taking the drop ceiling out so it'll be open up and people will be able to see it and use it again. But it's one of the hidden facts that most people never saw, you know, unless you knew something about it. Um, I remember we had a Beatles movie there, one of the first ones, I don't remember the name of it, but it was 64, it was uh, the first Beatles movie they made. That I had Lullaby set up and uh, projection booth watch a movie. You couldn't hear it because the girls were screaming so loud at the movie, which I thought was stupid. It's just a movie, you know. They can't hear you. At least up in the projection booth, they had a sound up there. You could kind of listen a little bit of sound, but I never forget that. I was sitting there thinking, my dad said the same thing. Crazy people out there yelling at a movie, you know. You can't see them. <laughs> but that's just what happened. Um, I just hope they get, get the money going, get the Colonial back. And I hope, like I said, I wish they would have kept the Paramount too because the Paramount was a beautiful theater. I mean, that's... I hate to see that tore that down. I wish I took some pictures. I haven't got very many pictures of that, but uh, you don't. At the time, stuff happens that you don't have to think about. So, but 
but that's basically all I can tell you is, you know, I just enjoyed them. I just said, my dad, if I hadn't been my dad, I wouldn't saw all this stuff. I got to see inside things though, that nobody else ever got to see. I came to Milltown in March 1927 as a ten and a half year old fifth grade kid. I don't remember anything of course Middletown before 1927, but I've, I've read a few accounts about the early theaters in Middletown. The Sword Opera House was one that was, that was built on South Main Street in 1891 for um, operas, vaudeville, orchestras, and musicals. Silent movies started in Middletown about 1910 with several theaters besides the Sword downtown. The mission was 25 cents for adults and 10 cents for children under age of 12. Of course, this was a problem because there's a lot of great big kids that still claim, still claim they were 11 years old. The first talk and movie, uh, The Great Train Robbery, uh, and I think it was, uh, I think mean, we still have a copy of that movie at the Middletown Historical Society. Charlie Chaplin, was one of the early silent movie stars, and there were a lot of cowboy shows, and uh, there were a lot of uh, cowboy shows. There was piano, uh, accompanying most of these silent movies to add some little style to them, and, and some of them have orchestras. Um, the first talking picture in Milk Shown in Milltown was shown at uh, Gordon, uh, at the uh, Sword, and I think this was about 1929. Uh, sword name was changed to Colonial, uh, and they even showed some opera put on by an opera group uh, from Richmond, Indiana. Uh, they did that for several years. The Sword has been shut down for several years and is presently going uh, renovation. And there's an article in a uh, February 19 movie, a uh, Middletown Journal, about the res restoration still going on. Okay, now, now we will uh, go to the Paramount Theater. Uh, Paramount was built about 1932 on North Broadway. It was across the street from number one uh, Milltown Fire Station. The building next uh, door to it to the south was originally the 1950 Methodist Church building, but in 1932, it was a shuttered a, a, a car agency. With, and it had a ramp so that you could go uh, from the street level to the second floor uh, driving a car up a ramp. At the opening, there was a large spotlight in the street in front of the Paramount with a, a shaft of light searching in the, into the air. And at, at the time, I lived in um, Camp Hook, and five miles away, you could see that beam of light. Uh, it was a beautiful theater inside and out. It had uh, matching staircases on each side to go up to the uh, uh, balcony. Uh, it was seen about a thousand people. I, I don't know for sure, but it's a great big one, and I would, I would judge about a thousand. And it had a large organ in the forward, forward which could be raised up to play. Uh, my, my brother Marvin uh, was a usher there about 1936-1937. Uh, uh, he would have a flashlight and greet the people coming in and take them down out and, and seat them on the in the seat. But he had problems. He would have to watch the side exit door because um, one kid could pay 10 cents to get in, but he'd go down and trip the door so his buddies could get in. Uh, the Mickey Mouse Club was a, a Saturday special. Um, the Ritter Girls were the main uh, dancers and singers. Uh, I think um, it closed sometime around 19, 1964.
And here's some comment ads from the paper. Here's Kevin Hepburn and those women. Fred McMurray and Carolyn Byrne. Princess comes up for us. Clark Gable and Loretta Young. Call of the Wild. Ever Horton Heaton, Horton Heaton, uh, his night out. Uh, this was at the Paramount. Claudette Cover, she married her boss. And Janet Gaynor, the farmer takes a ride. Now, we go to the, another movie in Middletown. The Strand Theater. Um, the Strand was at 1347 Central Avenue. It was built about 1930. I, I don't remember the exact date. Some time ago, maybe in the 60s and 70s, the name was changed to the studio. It's still standing, but it's empty. No movies have been shown for 25 or 30 years. It had a large, maybe maybe smaller than a Paramount because it had a balcony, but I think it could seat 800 or 900 people in that theater. And the Kyle Shoe Store was out in front, right off the sidewalk. So it's out of business, been out of business for a number of years. The Rex Theater was on Central Avenue in the east wing of the Bundy Apartments on Central Avenue. The next door to the east was the Elite Confectionery and then the railroad tracks. It was a small theater. Wallace Berry was shown as an airplane story and there was a lot of uh, cowboy shows. The kids could get in for 10 cents and see a movie, a comedy, and one, one of a serial that ran every week and you would have to come back the next Saturday to find out if the hero really was killed when the horse fell off the cliff or was hit by a train. And this was, it was closed before 1957. I don't know just when. Now the Gordon Theater, um, I remember, was on the north side of Central Avenue between Broadway and the Miami Canal. The canal was officially closed in September 29, but it still had some water in it for several years. The John Ross store was on the corner of Broadway, and a jewelry store was at the corner up by the canal. The Joy Shop and the Work Men's Shop were um, only two of several shops with the um, with the Gordon Theater approximately in the middle of the block. Uh, before it was even, before she was even married, Duck to Douglas Fox of June sold tickets uh, at, at this show. Uh, that would have been about 1934 and 35. The Gordon Theater burned down in 1940. In the 30s, there were a lot of Fred Astaire and uh, Ginger Roger uh, dance shows going in there. Theater. So that's what I remember about the Milltown movies. In 1954 and 55, I was just 16 and started my first job at the Paramount Theater. I worked in the concession stand selling popcorn, soft drinks, and candy, and remember a local beat cop would drop by on his rounds. He'd usually enjoy an orange drink while chatting with me during the slow times. Walking past the sweeping staircase as I approached the concession stand, I was always impressed with the grandeur of the theater. The auditorium seemed immense to me at the time, and I enjoyed the benefit of seeing any movie free as a perk of the job. I especially recall seeing The Blackboard Jungle about tough guys in an inner city high school and starring Glenn Ford and Anne Francis as teachers. Rock Around the Clock, the first rock song I remember really liking was released in that film and we enjoyed dancing to it throughout our high school years. The film created a sensation because there was one black boy in the cast played by Sidney Poitier. 
it was trailblazing. Another film I saw was a re-release of Gone with the Wind. It drew big crowds, and even in the 50s, people talked about the swear word Clark Gable used in one scene. Job duties were strictly segregated by gender in those days, so teen girls held jobs like the one I had, while boys ushered. In those days, an older woman usually sold tickets in the box office, but I remember being pressed into duty there once because a regular staff person didn't show up for work. It made me feel pretty grown up. I don't know how much money the boys were paid, but I earned 50 cents an hour. It probably wasn't enough to pay for the gas mom used driving me to work, but it was a good experience for me. Some of the teens who worked there became friends and planned outings together in particular. I remember one picnic and cookout. I live in San Francisco now, but when I learned that the theater was to be demolished, I was bereft. It was one of the iconic sights from a grand time that I was sad to see go. Patty Heidler Tibbs.